Number five, it opens the gates of paradise. So in today's video, we're going to talk about one of the 10 companions of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who has promised paradise. And one of them is, of course, Abdurrahman bin Auf. The 10 companions of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who has promised paradise were Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, Umar al-Khattab, Osman bin Affan, Ali bin Abi Talib, Talha bin Ubaidillah, Zubair bin Awam, Abdurrahman bin Auf, Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas, Sa'id bin Zaid, and Abu Ubaidah al-Jarrah. So these 10 companions have been given glad tidings by Rasulullah Wasallam during their lifetime. And of course, there are other companions as well. Hopefully, we can learn together and try to emulate in our own business so that we'll become successful entrepreneurs as well, just like them. So the first lesson that we can learn from Abdurrahman bin Auf is use cash, not credit. When I started this journey as an entrepreneur, okay, I attended one workshop and the instructor said that use other people's money, OPM, which is not a good advice. When you use other people's money, especially if it's a, it's a in terms of loan right, or credit, and if the business go south, you have another problem that you need to tackle, okay? Not a good advice, so use cash. So even though the number of supply that you get or raw materials that you get for your business, if you're using, uh, you're selling uh, physical product, right? Not as much as if you were to use borrowed money, it's okay, because what important is, you know, whatever transaction that you have, you know, it is completed there and then. I'm not saying that you abandon your customers once everything is completed. No, what I'm saying here is this, okay? That means you no longer have to think about whether you are able to pay your lender or not, okay? Even though the transaction, the business transaction is completed, right? Because uh, the money that you use for your business is not yours, okay? It's the creditors. So make sure you use cash whenever possible. Just use cash. So that's number one. Number two. Just make the sales, regardless of the profit margin. It's more on the barakah. Let me try to explain barakah in simple, in the layman terms. That means if you get X amount of money, right? This X amount of money can benefit not just you, but it can benefit a lot of people as well, right? Or in other words, it goes a long way. That is the concept of barakah, right? So if your sustenance or your profit, your sales, they don't have barakah in it, regardless of how much you make. It will not be useful to you, your community, your family members. Uh, maybe you will you will lose the, the billions of sales that you get in an instance or in a short period of time. That is one indicator that the, the sales that you have um, doesn't have barakah, right? So barakah is important. So the second lesson, okay, regardless of the profit margin, just you know, complete the sales, just complete the transaction, especially if you are brand new in business. You don't have any uh, sales history, right? So you don't know what is your profit margin, what your profit margin really is, right? You don't know the trend and so forth, especially if you are selling services. For example, me, I'm selling services. I'm doing consultancy, right? So uh, it can be 1%, it can be 10%, it can be 100%, it can be 1,000% right? because services. But if you have in business for quite some time, for example, I have in business over 20 years, so I know my profit margin. If the profit margin of the next project is too low as compared to the existing profit margin, uh, there's a possibility that I will not accept it. Okay, Not because I, I, I don't want to follow the footsteps of Abu Rahman bin Auf, uh, but I want to be fair to my existing customers or clients. That is the reason that I give to my potential clients if I don't agree with their term. But if you're brand new in business, if you're trying to figure out what, how much should you charge, then whatever profit that you can make, go for it. Just go for it, right? Because what important is baraka. Number three, tell the truth. You should never hide anything that will affect the decision of your customers, especially if that information is crucial to that transaction. For example, let's say that you are selling um, a mobile phone, right? And you know there's something wrong with this mobile phone. 
you have to tell the truth. Because what importance, again, my friend, is barakah. We want to have barakah, barakah, barakah. We want to have barakah in our business. Okay? And finally, my friend, number four. Okay, this is the lesson we can learn from Abdul Rahman bin Auf is not just Abdul Rahman bin Auf, all companions of Rasulullah and all the tabi'in and even the, the uh, today's Muslim, okay, we have to be uh, a community that gives charity as much as possible as much as possible give charity as much as possible there are a lot of benefits of giving charity and there are a lot of benefits or, or in islam we call it sadaqah right so what are the benefits of giving charity based on hadith of rasulullah sallallahu i will mention you i will mention to you some of them number one is it will cure illness number two it will ease hardship and remove calamities. Number three, it is an investment in this life and in the hereafter. Number four, it atones our sins. Number five, it opens the gates of paradise. Number six, it offers shedden on the day of judgment. Number seven, it purifies the nafs. Number eight, it is a way of accepting dua. Number nine, it creates balance and benefits to all society. And number 10, it is a way to earn rewards after death. So that's the beauty of Saraka. Regardless of how much you earn, how much you make right now, try to give Saraka. Or, or if in business, first of course, the priority is Zakat, right? You give alms, you give Zakat, then you give Saraka. And the, the best uh, group of people that you should uh, give charity to is, of course, your family members, right? Try to help them out first, then your community around you and, you know, the global community if possible, okay? Try to do that. So these are the four lessons that we can learn from Abdul Rahman bin Auf because at the end of the day, our success is measured by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not by the metrics used by uh, people around the world, by the corporate organization, no, by, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised paradise to Abdul Rahman bin Auf, that means he is a successful individual, right? And we know from history that this is one of the, the richest or maybe the richest companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So what can we learn from Abdul Rahman bin Auf? Number one, Islam doesn't prohibit us to get involved in business. As a matter of fact, Islam is entrepreneurial religion. If you read the, the uh, Sirah of Rasulullah sallallahu Rasulullah sallallahu was an entrepreneur himself before he was appointed as prophet. So we are an entrepreneurial religion. So get involved in business, get become an entrepreneur, but at the same time, Always follow the footstep or the strategy, the methods of the, the prophets, of the um, companions of Rasulullah because this method, this strategy will guarantee a success, not just here in this lifetime, but more importantly, in the hereafter. I conclude this video with this uh, hadith in uh, Sunan Tarmizi. This is a hadith number 1209 Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said al the truthful trustworthy merchant is with the prophets the truthful and the martyrs imagine my friend you will be raised up among the prophets and the martyrs right in the hereafter and inshallah will enter paradise that is the ultimate success. So if you'd like to learn more about business in Islam, entrepreneurship, and motivation, make sure you subscribe to this channel. If you feel that this information is, is useful, please share with your uh, colleagues and friends and make sure you subscribe to help me to grow this channel even more, to reach more audience out there, inshallah, to reach more Muslim entrepreneurs out there because the Islamic business model works it will make you successful, not just here in this lifetime, but more importantly, in the hereafter. Wallahu alam, God knows best.